Hello. <laughs> it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. I'm saying to you all. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back guys. It's been a little while since we've done a video. We've just been growing our brand and we've been doing our thing here with our shop and uh, just growing and serving our little community and kind of focusing on just personal things in life like raising my family and just developing my team and my business. So I finally have had some time to decide and I've heard you guys' questions and I read you guys' responses in the comments and judging off the performance of the beard video and the request, I've kind of wanted to give you guys a little double feed today we're gonna do a short beard trim with a flat top skin fade it's one of my favorite haircuts to do I really enjoy the flat top it's cool because it has so many different variations um, and ways that it can be done and today I'll share with you a variation that you can do multiple different ways your own barbershop or wherever it is you do hair so follow along with me today um, this is my buddy Nate and we're gonna do a nice cool flat top and a short beard trim First thing you're gonna do with a flat top, the premise of it is to make the top flat. Now the way I achieve it is I will start with just a standard uh, clipper comb and placing it along the parietal ridge of the head. I'll work my way around building a shape and then after I belt my shape, I will then remove bolt. Again, there, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, long ways, short ways. The way I'm showing you guys is, is just kind of a way I've developed doing them over the years through the shop. So check it out, do what you think. So depending on what, whatever side you want to start on, right, left, it don't really matter with this at all. So you'll just start here at the front and again you want to think with your comb like you want to have that thing straight up on the highest point of the head so you find that parietal ridge right here and you want to have the back of your comb nice and flat against that okay and that's how we're going to start doing this flat top and i'm just going to build this up all the way around the head Same thing over here, starting on the bridle ridge here and the highest point, my comb, work my way around here. Now from this point, if you were to look at this haircut from straight on, like you'll start to see like we're starting to build like sides of the flat top. So from that point is what I would do is utilize what they call a flat topper. Yeah, this is actually a real comb. Got a little level in there and that level is key to making sure the flat top is level. Like it's kind of funny looking and kind of like a gimmick almost, but it's, it's functional and it works. Taking your clipper and your flat topper, you're essentially using the flat topper to set a guide across the top that you will then come back in and clean it up later on. So like, I really like this cause it's got a bevel in it as well that kind of helps with giving you your pitch. And of course the level it's functioning and does work. And then I utilize this, give myself a guide through the top to start with. And then I'll just clean up that guide and then blend it all together. If I'm gonna do this step, oh, here we go. I'm gonna leave the fringe on his a little bit longer. So it, with my pitch, I'm gonna leave it up like this versus like dropping it down. So they, again, with what I was mentioning earlier with flat tops, there's so many flat tops where the fringe is longer on the front and where it drops down and then where it contours. The one we're gonna be doing today is gonna have a longer fringe and it's gonna be more slanting off the top. So just touch on that real quick. All the while I'm doing this, I'm sitting here tilting this back and forth and making sure that this is level. Because again, like the key is that little bubble right there, you wanna make sure it stays in between those two lines. That's level. I'll find my guide that I created with my flat copper and I just 
match it right on up. So I take my flat topper and I create a guide right down the center of the head. Now I'm gonna take my flat topper and continue. I'll go down the right side and then the left and then create a real rough draft guide. get toward the back of the head it's important that you want to start curving the flat top into the this base that you created at the beginning that way you don't have this big lump and mass of hair we're gonna slowly trim this down and carve it with a clipper comb and then shape it up but again right now we're just establishing a real basic baseline and draft what the final outcome of this is gonna look like uh, we'll just kind of find my guide I created there here's my guide and we'll just remove this hair here on the side All right. So you might be asking, like, why do you start the flat top before you start the fade? Well, the reason I prefer to do it that way is because I like to have my shape of the flat top all connected into my sides and then fade into it versus the opposite, where if you're fading too high and you accidentally remove key components of the flat top. So I like to build my shape up top and then I'll fade up into it. So that's, again, it's a method I like to do. It gives me a safety blanket, if you will, and some perimeters to know, like, where if not to go into because that's like going into the flat top if that makes sense so i have a guide set on the top and i got a guide set on the side what we're going to do now is we're going to try to clean up all this and kind of start shaping it into the flat top itself the flat topper comb is great for like i said initially it just sets the guide for you and then bolt it from there on out is utilizing a clipper comb and a clipper and just kind of shaping it and eyeballing it but it is actually a lot easier than you think it's just again with many things you got to make sure things are level and, and not uneven and, and symmetrical and, the, and if you follow those simple little things I am showing you like it's really super easy you don't have to do all these crazy partings or anything like that it's just make sure it's level set a guide build it up fade into it it's super easy but let's just keep going here so now I'm just kind of again just starting to shape this thing up Making sure that again, you know, like I got my guide on the top that lets me know where the top flatness is, and then I'm gonna just take these sides and just get them all blended in here and remove all these longer length hairs. I think the thing that intimidates a lot of people about the flat top is because it is haircut, but you have to utilize your sculpting abilities and you have to sculpt this super flat top to this cut with just utilizing the clipper and it can be a challenge for a lot of people that have never you know especially I remember when I was in barber school we'd have a couple of these clients that would come in here and there that would want a flat top and I remember whenever they had some of that uh, flat top clients come in everyone would try to blend in with the wallpaper because they, nobody wanted to do the flat top and I don't necessarily think it's just like one of those things like fading you know like you will get good as you do the reps and do the flat tops but again and it's it's gonna require you to get outside of your comfort zone and to really push like doing things like hand sculpting these haircuts like you see me doing and building up these really nice flat top style cuts because there's there's multiple variations of this style but like you know it, it just requires you to artistically see the flatness and shape it into the hair it's kind of like i said it's a tricky style it's a tricky cut but hopefully today after you see what we do we'll walk away with a little, a little bit more knowledge of how to get one done and how to complete one as you can see the sides are starting to shape up nice and square here if you were to look down this, the barrel there again i'm just gonna he's got a nice nice wavy curl in here that I've got to shape up into the and once we get that all blended in then I'm gonna focus on the fade and then we'll do finishing kind of clean up touches on the top if the hair has got like a wave to it like he does here it's good to maybe just use a volumizer or some water or something to hit it and get it all standing up real good because you don't want anything laying down when you're cutting a flat top because if it lays down on you and you try to shape it, it once it gets into a position where it wants to stand up again then it's going to be you're going to have some uneven hairs in there <laughs> The goal here is to get the hair to, to volumize, to stand up, because you're gonna be able to shape it into the way you wanna shape it for this haircut or to do. So again, I'm just gonna kind of freestyle this here. And Fade 
it helps me a lot when I'm doing a flat top. Like obviously I'm looking at it from the sides like you see me doing it. I like to get in front of it too because you can definitely see if it's doing anything like this, the left tilt. So I like to jump in front of it and I can see really good of like an area that I need to immediately clean up. Because if you see something sticking up over here, just jump over here and clean it up and vice versa for the other side. Again, a lot of just utilizing the comb and just building up that square shape that you see on the top. Don't be afraid to freehand to use your just your clipper. I know it's hair fine to take your clipper with no comb and just kind of freehand, but like that's gonna give you such an advantage to your cuts if you're able to like you see a corner and instead of having to pull out your comb and sit there with your comb freehand it because you can do the freehanding technique that you utilize for flat topping will be so much more beneficial to other things like beards and styles where you need to shape the hair. So just don't be afraid to take your clipper. I like to hold mine like you see in my hand and just kind of shape it. Think of this is a big eraser and you're just erasing the hair and shaping it down to the way it needs to be. Okay, so from that point, I mean, your shape is in. Um, I'm gonna do a little cleanup work afterwards, but I like as mentioning earlier, why do I why do I cut the shape and do this first before I fade the sides? Well, again, like I was mentioning, now now I got my shape, my sides are built, so now I know when I'm fading where not to go. Like if you were to accidentally set your fade too high, for example, that would make you go up into the flat top. So that, again, that's why I personally like to set my frame first and then fade into it. Again, there's a thousand ways to do this and no one way is the right way and the only way. So find a method that works best for you. Find something out of this method I'm showing you today and improve it and make it your own thing. All right. My next step is I'm gonna fade the sides out real quick. So like I would start any fade, I've mentioned this in other videos in the past, like you wanna start with landmarks on the body or the skull that like are not gonna move. Again, I don't like to love to use ears. I like to use the eye sockets, preferably when I'm setting the fade lines because then I know it's not uneven. So I'm gonna start setting my line. I'm gonna use his eye socket. Once I reach the back and you're here, it would be a great time to go over to the other side and set your line and then meet up with the line you've created and just connect the two and check them out and make sure they're even here at the socket of the eye. Set my lines and just kind of work my way back here to the back. Now, first thing I like to do with my line that I created, I like to come in the front here and I like to look and make sure that these two lines aren't doing anything like this because that means the fade's uneven. This line, I think it's just bring it just a little bit up. All right, I feel good about that. Now I'll come in the back, and this is again a big time when you utilize one of your biggest tools, and that's the mirror right there in front of you. And you want to use the mirror and just kind of make sure that these lines here look even and not all again doing that. So, all right. Now from this point, I would debulk all this hair underneath this line up. I like to use my trimmer because it's gonna get a lot closer than my uh, clipper does. That's gonna be the biggest thing for like doing a nice skin fade is you wanna make sure that utilizing tools that are gonna get your, your fade as close as you can to the skin without having to like go back and you know use your clipper then go back and use your, your trimmer. Trying to kind of think about just saving steps. And again, this is, this is just my preference on how I like to do it. And bulking this all off. <laughs> And I'm, you notice I'm stopping short of the top of the ears here. I want to make sure that I don't get into this beard yet because I'm going to fade the beard in. All right. And once that's all debulked, I'm going to just make sure that, that again, that the line is looking nice and symmetrical around his head here. Can you see any spots drooping or anything like that? Just make sure you clean them up and make sure you tighten that line up. I'm just going to run around one more time with my trimmer just to get any little hairs that I might have missed. 
All right, next, I'm gonna use a foil shaver and I'm gonna just foil shave about an inch to an inch and a half below the hard line you created. And so I'm gonna foil shave up to that. So. When I do smaller areas, tight areas, you'll notice I flip the foil shaver over and just use that single blade, just cause it's really tough to put a double, use both of them in an area so tight like that. So that's what I'll use, just a single blade there. So once I got that all foil shade set in smooth, I'm gonna begin to set my lines and work my way up with my fade. Clipper fully open, each zone, remember you're thinking about an inch, each zone is kind of the goal. Inch, 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 and blending it up. Okay, I'm just gonna work my way around the head here. All right, close halfway, go halfway up the zone. And then when it's fully closed, you'll only be at the bottom of the zone. That's a good rule of thumb to, to kind of think about when you're fading. Fully open, set the line, halfway closed to go halfway up the line, fully closed at the bottom of the line. You know, just kind of work again, blending and fading, guys. It's really, it's one of those things I wish that like, if you're a newer uh, barber or a newer stylist, Cosmo, whatever it is that you know that Fading is just one of those things that take time and reps and don't don't beat yourself up if it's just not coming together right away. When you're fading, again, it's really important to just try to make the lines to disappear. That's the goal is that you're, you're creating a taper, essentially that tapers from the skin up without any lines or blemishes. Use the mirror. If you, if you think, oh man, that looks good. I don't see no lines at all. Like double check it in the mirror because you won't believe how many times I've thought, oh, that looks great. And I'm looking at it and then I'll look it in the mirror and then there's a big old line. So remember, double check it in the mirror all the time. Now I'm gonna grab a half guard and the same thing I'm gonna go about an inch up if the hair is super super thick just make it a point to like debolt the area before you come through especially with a half because sometimes a half guard it can bind up in the hair and it won't cut as cleanly if the hair is a little longer so just make sure that if you're you know having a hard time just go and grab a one guard and go through and just debulk it and then come back through with your half and then your half will go through that one so much easier than if it's a long long length Yeah, I'll work my way back around just to kind of make sure that's all cleaned up. All right, now, like I said, with all the other zones, you know, once you get that all gone around, set that zone, close it halfway, and then halfway up that zone. That's really the long and short of a fade, guys. I mean, something I'll, I will say that, like, it takes reps and time to get good at them, but don't, if you're new, especially to barbering, barbering consists of a lot of uh, clipper work, uh, a lot of fade work. Don't beat yourself up if you're having a hard time and your fades are looking a little not so crispy because what I found is consistency and reps Petition will get your fade to looking good. All right, so now I've got my half. I'm gonna grab my one guard here, and same thing I've been saying, one inch up. And now this is where it, having those perimeters set on the flat top I had mentioned earlier is gonna kind of come into handy because now you're kind of starting to see, okay, here's the flat top. We're getting into the top make. Let's make sure that we don't start cutting too much into the shape and just fade it enough that it uh, doesn't get into all that good stuff of what makes the flat top what it is. a spot when you're fading especially an individual that has like kind of like a lumpy skull if you will and they have like lumps all through your fade's probably gonna like a lot of what looks like like a little dark spot so if you ever have those spot just think that whatever area that dark spot is in so like this is a one through here right so i'm gonna use my half size under it and just kind of blend it out because you want to remove length off of that that divot because there's a hole right there and the more you remove the length off of it and blend it 
it in, you'll get rid of the uh, the lines and that those divots. But you want to be careful when you do this because if you take it too far, you can run it. You know, you could really hurt the fade and run it down and, and create another line and get yourself in kind of a whole nother conundrum. So I'm just using the half and I'm kind of just buffing out a little bit that line right there. All right, so now I'm going to use my last and final guard here, and that's the one and a half here at the top. And once I get done with this guard, it'll really just be grabbing the clipper comb and just blending it in from there, which is super easy and doesn't take long at all. Halfway closed, working my way around. Fully closed and just kind of buffing out the bottom of it. Okay, and from here, the fade is pretty much done. I'm gonna take my one and a half or my, my clipper comb and I'm just gonna blend in to the sides here. You'll notice there's a little bit of a kind of a build up around here. I'm just gonna remove that with the comb and just build that up into the shape of the flat top here. We're gonna blend in this side here. Okay, so now that the sides are faded in to the flat top, this is where I would do any cleanup and refinement work of the flat top. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a second to, to shape up any of the loose hairs that may have made it through the setting the flat top length. Something to bear in mind, um, if you have a, an individual like my buddy Nate here, he's got a lot of waves in his hair. And I think that it's not necessarily a deal breaker for a, a flat top, but it is, I think it does give it a cool element. And um, just know that if it does have waves in it, you know, like you're gonna have to be shaping wavy hair, you know, like it's just the way it's gonna work out. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna make it not a flat top hair type. You just gotta make sure that you're shaping those waves nicely as well and, and not letting those waves kind of just get in the way of you or, or cause you to feel like, oh, I have to remove the wave out of there to really showcase the flatness. No, that you, you don't necessarily have to do that. Like I'm using his waves, especially in the front, make that fringe look good when it's all done. So just something to bear in mind. Now, I like to use my thinning shears. I'm gonna get me a, a comb here. And now I'll just kind of come through the top and just, just think of this thinning shears as um, kind of a, a polisher. You're just gonna be polishing these rough edges and any of these longer hairs that are sticking out. You're just using your thinning shears to clean them up. Like I said, I just go around the perimeter and just get it all cleaned up. And remember, like I was telling you, all throughout the cut, don't be afraid to jump around and look at the different angles because that's going to really tell you whether or not it's super flat or if you got an angle that's off or if it's tilting. So you'll see me whenever I do these that I'm just kind of jumping all over the place and looking at it from all these different angles. And again, this is you know a time that you'll see me free handing. I'll grab my clipper kind. the back of the head here. You really want to make, have a nice curve down into the fade like you see me from you here. This is another great chance to help yourself, give yourself an angle of perception to like me clean up anything that you may have missed. Cause again, that mirror ain't gonna lie to you. That way you're not having to sit there and jump out in front of them every couple seconds like I like to see me doing. But the only thing about this one right here is kind of like with any time you face a customer toward the mirror, you might see them starting to do the whole thing where they're touching it and, you know, questioning it. But just, they just remind them that that mirror is not a tool for vanity for them to look at themselves, but it remind them it's a mirror for you as a tool to get their hair cut looking the 
best they can. Yes, obviously, you know, if they're facing toward it, you know, the way they look and see themselves is, is important, but in this moment, right now, it's being used for dialing in my flat top. But just don't be, like, if you're one of those barbers, because I, I know what you mean, like, if you're the type that just is like, hey, you know what, turn them away from the mirror, don't let them see, I get it, you know? But also, don't skip on an opportunity to use that mirror for yourself as well, you know? Like, if they start poking at it and asking questions, just reassure them, say, hey, I'm not finished yet. Once you're finished with that area, just spin them back away from the mirror. Because again, you know, the mirror is not meant to have them stare at themselves the whole time. It's meant for you to use get things being nice and square and symmetrical. All right, so from there, I feel pretty good about the flat top. From here on out, we're gonna leave this, and this is a finished flat top. I, uh, I'm i gonna hold off on putting product on it at this moment because I gotta do this beard trim still. Cool thing about a flat top, it's kind of one of those cuts. It doesn't need a whole lot of the product in it because it's so short and it has shape into it, and the, uh, the shape is standing up. I'm using my shears right now just to kind of do a little detail working in, just really to get the hairs that just when you're using your clippers, that just are really difficult to run into the clipper. They're kind of fighting you, not wanting to funnel into the clipper blades. I like to come through and use my my shears and just kind of really barely cleaning the tips and the, the long lengths that I couldn't get to funnel in, into the clippers. The flat top is just, again, it's just such a, a creative cut as well because you're literally having to create a super flat shape out of hair. And regard, like I mentioned earlier, like if they have waves in it, like you see here, waviness, then you still gotta figure out a way to shape it. And I, like I said, the waves to my, in my opinion, they, they give it a great depth. So next we're gonna move into the beard. So let's get it. Hey guys. I just wanted to take a quick second, let you know that this video is a longer video than we have done before in the past. So we're gonna be breaking it into two parts. This will be the end of part one. And we'll provide the link in the bottom of this video to get to part two. We hope that you come check that out as well. Thank you for watching so far and we really appreciate you. Appreciate you sitting there looking beautiful the whole time.